<laughs> it's that way. Campgrounds? It is this way. Yeah, yeah, turn around and just follow this road to the end. Zabel for the first time. I'm gonna pull it over in here. So I will say that at least the setup right now, the front handlebars, I'm gonna have a shorter handlebars, you know, on it. And that really vibrates. See, it doesn't vibrate that much. No, um, it obviously sits up really high, this bike. Um, let me just move it over to there. That one's a freezy. So here is the Zabel 700, taken out for the first time. Now, I also haven't ridden in a long time. I haven't been riding, so I kind of take it easy on this thing. So a couple things. So first of all, it feels, the engine feels a lot just like the Mako 700. <clears throat> it feels you know, very similar. I did get a dyno chart from Frank, who worked for Zabel. This is what this motor is supposed to be doing. But, again, I don't know. And uh, the other thing is that I need to fix this clutch. For some reason, you know, it's, um, you know, it starts out good, but then it starts getting real grabby. I mean, it starts only going like this far right here. And it's not really engaged, disengaging is good the more you hold it in. So I need to check that out. It's also a lot harder to pull in than the Mako um, with the same settings I have, you know. It is harder to shift than the Mako is. The Mako has much smoother shifting. It's just really smooth. This bike here, it has a very, very um, much harder shift. So one of the differences with Mako is it has this thing bolts into there. So this thing, I mean, again, once you get to the bottom, it's on neutral. So it's only four up, you know, and all down to neutral. But you can hear that? It's much more beefier to try and, I mean, you really can't knock this thing out of gear. <laughs> you know, and so switching down, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, 
you know, it's kind of like, you know, like they said, the old KTMs, right? They're hard to shift. I mean, this thing is, it's solid shifting. It's just, you know, it shifts with authority. It puts it in there and it's there, you know? Like the Mako has a very, very light shifter, very smooth shifter, you know, like a, you know, yeah, I mean just like a like a Honda would or something, you know. But this bike here has a very very hard shift compared to the Mako. Um, so the other thing is that um, again, if you're wood riding and saying burn a spark plug, it's got two spark plugs you got to change. So I had to bring two spark plugs because I need to change this thing. Yeah, the other thing is that um, to the vibrations, you know. Um, <clears throat> not sure why. I mean, this thing does have a short. I better put shorter handlebars on. I think than on the Mako, and the Mako also has the guards. I don't have on this. The other thing is that it is breaking up in the top end when I scream it, and so I think it does need jetted. I didn't change the jetting on this. Um, I don't even know if I changed the. I mean, it's been so long. I was building this thing that I messed with the carb and stuff. I don't even know if I changed the. Air screw. So, so I think it does need to go down like I did on the Mako. I don't think I did that on this yet. So, but it's definitely breaking up the top end. <clears throat> Bottom end seems fine. Again, a lot of power, but because of the hardness of how to shift this, not as much. And, and I noticed before I put it together, it's a lot harder to pull this in even with the spring help than the Mako. It has a much harder pull than the Mako does for some reason. So, that and um, the fact that this is slipping right now, it makes it harder to ride on, on a trail. So, since it just keeps slipping. But, um, yeah, so, so that's, that's my current summary of this. You know, they're very close. See if we can drift start this.
Yeah, the um, now the difference between this and the uh, Mako is that this has a bigger intake, is a case inducted, two spark plugs, you know, dual spark plug, and um, it's a longer stroke. <clears throat> so this bike is a true 700. It does have a longer stroke than the Mako does. So that's one thing. So I'm thinking about my rich problem. And the other thing I'm thinking is that um, it could be the air filter. I've seen that before where some of these you know, aftermarket air filters end up, you know, being too rich, you know, not getting enough air flow through. So that could also be the problem here as to why it's, you know, also too rich. The only way to test that though would be to take off the air filter. So I will have to do that. Probably do that as my last thing I test out before I leave. I'll just take off the air filter real quick and I'm gonna hit this tree. Getting out of neutral accidentally.
Okay, so the air filter is off now. I'm going to wedge it here so I can't get dirt that way. But, <clears throat> I mean, obviously this isn't great, but... Thank you. 